I say that this was for charge currents, right? And this was for neutral currents. So this is only charged, and that right handed part, that left handed part, and this diagonal part of the matrix will be neutral currents. So uh, we can see from this equation that uh, it's, uh, it will be much more complicated to deal with the neutral currents than with the charge. So my first proposal would be we just focus on the uh, charge ones and try to see what whether we get the V minus A theorem we, was, we were so happy with uh, confronting with the, the predictions. So what am I doing on this slide? Uh, just writing instead of the do volume one plus r plus or minus i do volume two, just one do volume plus and one do volume minus. Which means, coming back to the previous stuff, that we will deal with uh, a current in between two spinors driven by a vectorial field, which would be either do volume plus or do volume minus. You with me? And that's, uh, that's quite uh, straightforward to, instead of building G1 and G2, to build the sum, of, uh, the sum and the difference of G1 and G2, the currents, uh, W plus, W minus. And you find back, if you do this uh, calculation, the uh, ladder operators, you find back the, the power matrices sigma 1 plus or minus i sigma 2, which is just an increasing of one unit of isospin or decreasing one unit of isospin. Yeah? So my current is, uh, can be written uh, this way. Psi bar L, mu bar L, E L, psi L on this side, and you just get sigma plus uh, on top of this, gamma mu sigma. Okay, this is our uh, straightforward derivation from first principles of SU2 uh, left invariance. So we, um, I'm almost at the, the conclusion of this. I, I should just express psi L and psi bar L as the general states in order to see whether I'm back with uh, V minus AC. So let's do this. That's psi L. Uh, psi bar L will be mu e uh, L. And uh, we just change psi L by PL psi, where I'm writing explicitly the projector uh, 1 minus gamma phi, okay, which selects the left handed state. And psi bar R is just written psi bar PI. P. If I'm injecting that into this current, I'm finding back this. And this is exactly what I was wishing for. We find back gamma mu times 1 minus gamma phi, which we have seen this to be uh, the covariant bilinear, which is making the maximal parity variation. So we have, we have just completed our task. So we find back the thing that we already derived but from first principles, we have said that the interaction is generated by SU, SU2 left. You feel the difference? I mean, this is a theory. That was not. OK. So my charge current, eventually, uh, I, re I have rewritten here the charge current like on G can be elegant, elegantly, I mean, in a condensed way, written as the possibility of having W plus or the possibility of having W minus. So I have written all the physics which, which is dealing with that, left on, and uh, let me write it this way, W minus, and new bar. All this physics is embedded into this. So I have also the double plus, which would give me uh, this and 
and the neutrino level. And I should also change uh, the lines uh, because, uh, because the subparticles are not Okay, so all that physics, which I'm pointing with my red laser, is written in that. And we have so much more from our initial equation. We have all the neutral currents which we are expecting to be weak or electromagnetic in the game. And that's the diagonal part. So this is much more cumbersome to, uh, to deal with that. Maybe we would need, uh, I don't know, two or three hours in order to, to come to the final uh, equation and that you'd be convinced uh, seriously that you are doing right. Uh, I see that my typo is uh, still there. Uh -huh. uh, and for the diagonal part, let me try maybe to comment on the equation, not, uh, not taking it and bringing it till the end, but to comment on it. We have left handed and right handed currents. So that is good. Because QED is dealing democratically with left handed and right handed. And neutral currents for weak interaction is also doing the same. And we have a specific pure left handed guy, which is the Volusion. So then uh, it could be extremely tempting that we say this W3, that's the Z boson. Why not? It comes from SU2, and it's a weak interaction, uh, it could be nice. And we say that B is what, according to you? The photon, that's what you say. Excellent. Uh, we could say that. This is the photon, and I'm back with the QED, and this is the weak interaction, neutral current, and, and, and this is all. Except that, uh, a priori, uh, that would mean I'm making a choice, and I know this choice is wrong because neutral currents are maybe not dealing democratically between the right handed and left handed, but dealing with both. And as such, I will have to make uh, to make a trade uh, around there, not losing generality in my uh, theory right. So we start from this Lagrangian density. We are rewriting it, and uh, okay, if ever you are taking lecture notes, this should read GR. Uh, that is wrong. This is GR. Um, and, and we go one step further. So W3 and B mu, they must be related to the photon of QED and the Z boson of the weak interaction. So what is the most general way to uh, build up uh, those guys? This is by having the rotation of my gauge fields. So W3 is not the Z, B mu is not the photon. Instead, the Z is a combination of W3 and B mu. And the photon is also a combination of B and W3. OK? So I'm totally generic. And as you might have guessed, I have introduced a new constant, a new free parameter of the, of the nature, which is this theta uh, W. And so the theory will not tell me anything on that guy. I will have to measure it experimentally in order to go further in my predictions. So let me use that statement to say that the, the standard model is uh, not about uh, theory uh, only. It's an experimental uh, theoretical effort. You have three parameters that have to be measured in order to make a prediction. And so the only way to say something meaningful scientifically is to have consistency checks of the theory. And this is what I will try to, to show in the very conclusion of this slide. But I would like you to keep in mind that uh, 
I mean, a theory without experiment would not yield to any scientific statements in, uh, in that region. Uh, okay, so uh, we have to do some uh, some math there. Uh, that is my uh, linear combinations of the uh, W3 and PU states. I'm taking back from my Lagrangian density for the neutral current, and I work the mass for this. Uh, yeah, maybe 10 quarter in front of, of the quarter. And you, you have seen maybe that I tried to factorize everything in terms of Z and A fields, such that we can discuss the, the good bits. So, uh, yeah, let me advertise that this is uh, maybe alpha and alpha effort. Uh, you start from, from this, and this is alpha and alpha effort to reach uh, around there. And what do we do with this? Uh, we go back to, uh, to the experimental constraints. What do we want? We want that the neutrinos, which do not have any electric charge, do not couple to the photon. So what does it mean in my equation? The photon is here. The only possibility I have is to make this quantity zero. Second, electromagnetism, I know that uh, does not care about the left-handed or the right-handed. Uh, Left-right is, uh, is a fantastic symmetry. So I want the right-handed and the left-handed to be democratically uh, defined. Means what is, what is for L, should also work for R. GR, ah, this time I've corrected the question. GR cosine theta W must be equal to the left ended counterpart. Okay, second equation. And eventually, I want electromagnetism. So the coupling constant of the electromagnetic interaction must be the electric charge. Let's play the mass. So first, second, third conditions, they are written over there. And I can provide this uh, interesting synthesis. So let's, let's read the equation. Uh, that is the coupling constant of the weak interaction introduced in the previous lecture. That is my weak angle mixing angle, which relates the gauge fields, W3 and A and B, to the physical field, the Z and the photon. And this is the uh, electromagnetic coupling constant, the, the alpha. And you know the electric charge, it's a, it's a way to say that we like to have uh, non-dimensioned uh, quantities as coupling constant. And so we made we, we made so much here. That's the that's the electronic unification. Why? Uh, we have removed one coupling constant. We have related we have related the electromagnetic constant to the weak uh, coupling constant. And yet, uh, the price that we are paying is that we have a new quantity. So that's that's why. Uh, this is not the unification as you, you wanted it in several of your questions. The standard model is not actually unifying uh, weak and electromagnetism, but it's related to the coupling constant. And then you have to ask the experimentalist to, to do the measurement of the ZW in order to, to, to relate quantitatively uh, those quantities. So uh, let me stress, uh, anyway, even if I'm taking this word of caution, that this is an amazing achievement uh, already. You can relate in, in the same framework uh, two interactions which seem to be uh, different a priori. Uh, the other thing, so my, my concluding sentence on this is, this is the first step towards you. It's not you. Uh, the second thing, which is uh, great, I believe, is that the photon appears naturally. We are the photon uh, in the game uh, from first principles. 
And the Z couplings, they are also different. It means that as soon as you get theta W, you can quantitatively predict uh, a certain number of observables that you can find back. And maybe the first prediction is that there must be a C out of this C. That was uh, formed at CERN in uh, 1984. Um, so in the series uh, of slides, uh, you, you will get eventually. Uh, I, I'm going through the computations of the different quantities. I propose that we just don't do this here, but you have the material in order to, uh, to do it by yourself if you do wish it. Okay? But I'm sparing you for tonight. Uh, so, what I've done is uh, to write the leptonic current as we have written uh, the, the, the charge current, uh, providing the V minus A, and I will just go to the conclusion which is this one. Uh, it's similar to what we found for the W. This is a kind of V minus A uh, interaction term. The difference is that in front of the V, you have a coupling which is not one, which is GV. And this GV depends on what? A I3, Q, sine squared theta W. And you have a GA, which is not one, uh, and which depends on uh, almost the, the same quantity. It's parallel, only on the isospin, because this is the, the left-handed part. Uh, OK, so we have the charge currents. We have uh, the, the neutral currents, the Z. And, and we have the QD uh, with, with, the, with the photon expressed earlier. So if you want to make uh, now calculations, but you need to uh, ask experimentalists what is uh, the value of sine squared theta W, theta W, uh, and with, with mixing them. And I have chosen here to uh, ask uh, people doing neutrino physics to provide uh, me with that quantity, because it will allow me then to make some predictions for uh, uh, the Z decays. The neutrino People making this measurement do not really care about, uh, about the Z at rest. Uh, and, and so I can pick safely that value and, and make some predictions. So you have here the calculations of uh, all the quantum numbers and couplings for the elementary fermions. And again, we must go back to nature in order to see uh, whether we are good on it. For those of you who do like uh, calculations, I mean, you can, you can play this, uh, this game. Uh, the thing I wanted to calculate is the Z width, the probability that the Z decays uh, in anything. And uh, this is maybe a two hours or three hours uh, work. Uh, you just need the polarization vectors of the Z, and uh, you need the specific uh, uh, matrix elements for the left-handed and right-handed uh, couplings. Uh, so let's, let's go to the bottom line. Uh, this is the very simple expression uh, one gets. So th this is something uh, I really like when, when we are making those calculations. I mean, it takes uh, five uh, blackboards. Uh, you have initially matrix elements, which, which are the size equivalent to the blackboard, right? And at the end, it's as simple as this. Huh? After three hours of uh, uh, So what do we have in that expression? Uh, GZ, GZ is uh, nothing else than GW, but uh, mitigated by the cosine the theta W. So it's just a convenience of notation. Okay? What else? The mass of the Z, yes, that's the parameter of the game. Uh, 48 pi, this has to come from, uh, from both phase space and uh, calculations of, uh, of the, the constants. 
and you, this is as simple as gb squared plus ga squared. Boom. Uh, we calculated all those, right? And we asked uh, the neutrino physics to provide uh, cosine theta w. And we have the mass of the z, so we can we can go with uh, with calculations. You can go with calculation. I, I made them. Uh, and the prediction is 2.5 g for the total mass. Okay, and I'm feeding uh, all the elementary leptons uh, from z to ff bar, and the width is 2.5 g. And this is the, the moment uh, we should be uh, extraordinarily happy. That is what was measured at the end. You feel how good it is? What have we set in the game? We have set uh, SU2, left cross U1, hypercharge. That's our hypothesis. Uh, the, the local uh, invariance uh, dogma. Huh? Uh, but come on, we, we find back the V minus A theory and, and we get the neutral currents just, uh, just great. The photon, QED, we know that it's, it's correct up to uh, so many orders uh, that the experiment cannot, cannot uh, challenge the theory. Uh, and for the, the neutral currents, we, we, get, we get it right. So this could be the end of. Uh, the lecture, but it's not completely, so I'm making the summary. Uh, I define the first family as this uh, vector. I have a left handed neutrino, a left handed electron, or well, right handed neutrino, I have it up here, uh, a right handed electron. We have just uh, introduced uh, the charge matrix, matrix matrix, and the isospin uh, matrix, and eventually the global. Lagrangian density is written like that. This is our standard model. We can ge uh, generalize that to the quarks uh, family. And as we did for the, the photon, for the QED, we can add up the kinetic terms. Remember, this F mu nu guy. Ah, so it's not exactly the same here. Because instead of the nice equation of the Abelian group, which you have there, which is totally invariant, uh, you have this additional commutator, which is coming from the fact that SU2 is not Abelian. And this has quite an implication, uh, because when you add up the uh, when you add up uh, uh, okay, so I have not added up uh, anywhere. Yes, here, sorry. When you add up uh, this, uh, this term, you see that you will have the multiplication of one W by another W by another W. So you have photon W plus W minus, which is possible. You have Z into W plus W minus, which is possible. Oh, I have a prediction. I have the prediction that Z into Z, Z, it's not authorized in my theory. Ah, I cannot make three times uh, the Z there. All the photo. Uh, I like this kind of prediction. Uh, this, this cannot exist in the nature if the standard model is the correct thing. At LEP, we have the energy to look at that. Well, the problem is that you can never say uh, yes in science, but you, you, you can say no. Uh, so within the precision, that we eventually get. We have not seen uh, any couplings like that. On the contrary, this guy, I have to this way, 
this guy, as soon as we add the energy, it was the dominant one. And according to the couplings that you, that you can define. OK? So the, the, the non Abelian nature of the fundamental uh, symmetries at the origin of the electronic interaction, uh, they seem to be met uh, in the nature. Uh, so we, we have all good uh, so far. Uh, then I, I promised uh, I promised at the beginning to, to do something with QCD, and I propose that we don't. And uh, let me be uh, provocative for thirty seconds. Uh, uh, this is called aparte en quantum chromodynamics. So uh, I'm saying a uh, few things on that. So the, the, the group is SU3 color now. So it has eight generators. There will be eight neurons. But morally, there is nothing much change with respect to the SU2 as far as the autocouplings are concerned. I will not write the Lagrangian on the board, but I could. Uh, I will count the number of three parameters. What is QCD uh, providing? One parameter. So, actually, two. Uh, there is a very strange uh, thing which often we are putting under the carpet. So, that's a French expression. I don't know if it's like in English. Put the dust under the carpet. Uh, there is another one which is called the strong CP phase. QCD has everything to make a very strong matter antimatter uh, asymmetry, and it seems that it doesn't. And this parameter is set by experiment as 10 to the minus 10, which means that we are left only with one parameter. One parameter, one prediction how this guy is running with energy. We discussed that with uh, his Maria uh, lecture. And by look, I mean, that is my prediction. These are the experimental points. Uh, that's finished. This works. So that's my way of treating the QC. It's not fair because it's a beautiful theory, but for, for the time being, let's admit that. So it works. QCD is the theory of strong work. And I'm just adding to my standard model that guy. SU3 color times SU2 left times SU1 alpha charge. And this is what people are usually saying for the standard model. OK? Bon, uh, we can be uh, very happy almost. Remember that I started by the uh, by taking just a little part of the Dirac equation at the beginning. So let's now try to inject the mass. Uh, and first, the mass of the W and the Z. Uh, I have no room uh, in the theory to give it the mass, to give to both of them the mass. Uh, and so the reason is, so the electronic symmetry is very powerful. I'm sure that you are convinced of that now. But it's too powerful. It forbids. It forbids because of the local uh, gauge invariance uh, that the W and the Z are the mass. So I, I failed at uh, describing the nature. Uh, and what about fairness? I just say, if I start with the Dirac mass, I will break uh, the symmetry. And that the local gauge invariance does not allow me to do. So we are in a strange situation where we have uh, remarkable predictions, but uh, the impossibility, because the symmetry is too powerful, to, uh, to describe the nature as it is. So we must break the symmetry in a given way. And that's the second part of. Uh, of that lecture. So maybe if you just want to take uh, a break and progress by uh, asking questions or making comments, 
just before I'm going to the next part. <laughs> So we felt uh, cheered up by the fact that all our predictions were fantastic and so disappointed with that. Yes, so uh, let me go there. Uh, how much time? Maybe, maybe you could tell me how much time we have. Half an hour? Okay. Uh, so there is a solution. There is a solution to that problem, and this is called the spontaneous symmetry breaking. Uh, this is due to uh, three theoreticians working independently. Well, Higgs was working on statistical physics, and Brot and Englert were um, maybe in particular uh, uh, physicists, and they were working together. So this guy is an American, and he went to Belgium in order, in order to work with. Uh, with his friend uh, Higgs. And Higgs is a Scottish uh, guy. Uh, and this will allow us to answer uh, those two questions how mass comes to intermediate bosons and how mass comes to elementary fermions. You feel that uh, the problem is the mass. We cannot account for the mass of the body to see. We cannot account for the mass of the fermions. Uh, okay, so let's start by what is uh, the spontaneous uh, symmetry breaking. Uh, do you know the ferromagnets? Yes, of course. Uh, above a given temperature, the spins of the ferromagnet are just uh, not ordered. Huh? It's like it's possible to, to move in three dimensions. And below a given temperature, there is a phenomenon which occurs, and all the spins are uh, going in the same direction. They are aligned. So you go for an O3 uh, symmetry to an O2 uh, symmetry. This is something like that that we would like to do. Huh? We would like that uh, SU2 uh, cross U1 uh, breaks at some point towards, uh, I don't know, QED. Uh, and we keep the, the good properties, and we have, in addition, uh, the mass of the, the interesting object. Uh, I have another analogy. Uh, about uh, this, and this is related to plasma uh, physics. So, uh, maybe you know that uh, better than, than I do. Uh, you imagine a plasma medium, and you try to send uh, light in the, in the medium. If you look at the dispersion relation, uh, you have something like that, which means that the refractive index is less than one. This is the usual for this kind of medium. And if you look at the propagation of a photon, it will only happen uh, if its energy is above the, uh, how to call that, the intrinsic energy of the plasma. And in equations that give this expression. So it's like the photon is acquiring a mass in the medium. And again, uh, that's something we'd like to do for our theory. We would like to fill the vacuum with something, and that this something interacts with the particles uh, such that the mass occurs. Like the medium of my plasma is giving a mass to my photon. In that case, it's not a real mass, it's uh, equivalent to a mass. Okay, so let's, uh, let's do it. Let's do it. I have to fill the vacuum by something. And I will start by the simple uh, thing I can inject in the nature, and this is a scalar, a particle which has no spin. Uh, and I'm making another hypothesis combined with, uh, with uh, 
quantum field theory, this is called the uh, uh, five-fold potential. Uh, I'm introducing a five field, uh, and this pot the, uh, the potential of, the, of that field is uh, given by this uh, equation. Um, and so maybe I will do it on the blackboard. Huh? That way you will, you will correct my mistakes and, uh, and you will follow in an easier way what you want to do. Um, so I want to find the minimum of this potential. That's what we are doing in, uh, in physics, right? So let me write it. This is okay when I write on the board. You can you can see it. So that's my potential, and I want to uh, find the minimum. I, I make the derivation of it. Huh? I mean, I'm not used to this kind of chunk, and uh, I'm just destroying it very fast. Uh, so in, in, in 30 seconds, I'm writing with my finger. Uh, and so if I do like that, what will I get? I will get 2 times mu squared 5 plus 4 times 6. 4 times what? Lambda 5, 3. Now this is not easy to read. Huh? This is my way of uh, doing this, the, the chunk, which is not OK, or? <laughs> yes, it is. So what, what is the technique to make it uh, right? <laughs> you don't. So I, I will try to, to, to make it push uh, harder. Huh? I want to make it zero. So there is one way to do it. Uh, which is quite easy. Okay, you have to be delicate with the check, which I was not to give. That would be this. Bon, uh, that's uh, interesting, huh? trivial. The parameters then have this meaning in terms of, uh, of sign. Uh, the field will acquire a mass which is uh, mu square, and I have not answer anything. Okay, so that that solution is uh, well, it's one solution, but but it does not bring anything. I would like uh, that something is wrong. And the other solution is what? The other solution is that phi square is equal to minus mu square g by d by 2 lambda. Am I correct? Yes. Yes. Ah, so that is, in terms of shape of the potential, that is uh, not trivial at all. This is this guy, a Mexican art. You see the Mexican hat? You have the minimum, which is all around here. OK? So let's make some notations consistent with what is written that. I am able to derive from this that the field at minimum uh, is v over square root of 2. And that means that my quantity v uh, is uh, nothing else that uh, minus mu square over long. Yes? And that's my minimum. Uh, you think that I'm out of battery? Yes? Ah, no. No, no. Well, let me check if I'm not uh, out of battery in a way. No, 41. Uh, je, suis, je suis impeccable. Okay. So, a uh, very bizarre uh, solution, but extraordinarily 
to work full for what we want to do because uh, here uh, any value is possible except that the nature has to uh, choose one and, and this is the game uh, we will play uh, we choose one value and we expand uh, around this value as we usually do in physics Okay, so if I uh, rewrite my potential, uh, this, this guy here, knowing what I know for the minimum, I, I will have some conclusions. So let me, let me do it on the blackboard. And you will have to help me for the, the calculation. So my potential now will express as uh, minus d square lambda. This is new square. Agree? And I have to uh, to bring uh, phi as I've just uh, done. So it will be V plus, uh, let, let me call it uh, H, uh, and divide by uh, square root of 2, which means divide by 2. OK? And I have here 5 squared. And the other quantity is that. So in that case, my square root of 2 becomes uh, a factor of 4. And I have four around here. Maybe I should not have started the calculation on the blackboard, but I'm committed to it right now, so uh, let's, uh, let's play the game. So this one will give me lambda d square, d square plus 2hv plus h square. Uh, plus something which will be one fourth of lambda d4 plus four times d3 h plus six times d2 h2 plus four times d h3 plus h4. Uh, I have I have things uh, which uh, I can simplify, right? Because for this guy, I have minus lambda v 3 h v 3 h lambda. And what else can I simplify? I have v2 h2 minus lambda over 2, 6 divided by 4, h2, v2. Okay, so I think, I think I'm good. And I can write the final potential. The final potential is minus lambda plus lambda over 4, v4. Plus. Uh, yeah. Minus. Minus. That's a constant, right? Then, what else? Uh, if I go to V3, I have nothing. If I go to V2, I have 3 divided by 2 minus 1. So it's plus 1. Lambda D2 H. Very good. Then we go to uh, H3. H3 just appears here. So I have lambda V H. And eventually I have one fourth of lambda H3. Am I okay? No? Not one half. One. Here? 
half minus one half, yes, makes one. Are we good this time? Yeah. So I'm removing the uh, above line. And let's do physics. What is that? V is a constant. Uh, this is the minimum of my vacuum. Lambda is a constant. It's a part of my potential. That is a constant. Okay. What is that? Yeah, mass. Master. Ah. So I, I'm not yet at SU2 cross U1, but we have the we have we have an element of the answer uh, to the question of uh, Alexandra yesterday. Who is doing who is giving the mass of the, the scalar? Well, uh, the shape of the potential. The shape of the potential is giving the mass. It will be a free parameter in the theory, but it's there. Okay? What is that? Interaction. Interaction term. Uh, let me write it this way. So this boson, uh, the expansion uh, of this guy, makes a trilinear coupling. A trilinear coupling which is proportional to lambda p. So if you ever you measure that coupling, you know the shape of the potential. And that will make, if ever we have a machine for that, uh, maybe a, a kind of final test of, uh, of the standard model. Uh, and that is also uh, an interaction term. Uh, bon. Uh, if this one is difficult to measure, uh, this one is uh, just uh, out of reach. You will get the, the three level of uh, uh, So I, I think we, we did a lot because, uh, so we will find back uh, the, the equations. So that would be nice that, that I have the, the same. Thanks. Thanks to your help, uh, this is the this is the same, um, and so we have one massive particle. And if I would have propagated the, the whole picture, uh, I, I would have one other, which is massless. And this guy is called the Goldstone boson. It would become important only at the end. So this is compliant to U one symmetry. Huh? That was. That was my initial uh, stuff. Compliant to you. What I want to, to get is something compliant to SU2 cross U1. And it's enough that I am making a doublet of weak isosmol. This guy is a charged uh, field, this guy is a neutral field. And uh, this is a complex system, so they have uh, each two components. Okay? So that's a new member of our standard model family. We have set in the nature a SU2 doublet, which is a scalar one with those two quantities. Let me kill uh, this one immediately. Uh, we want QED, so if we want to comply to the one, this phi plus should be trivial, uh, should be zero. Uh, it, doesn't, it does not exist anymore in our system. So what are we left with? We are left with uh, a complex field, and a unique complex field. Okay. And this is uh, what I have taken. So what we have written on that board does exactly apply to SU2. The only thing which will be different now that uh, we, we know about the kinetic terms in non abelian theory, which are never only kinetic terms, is that there will be some further interactions around them. So, uh, so far, so good. So, what do we do? We come back to the local invariance dogma 
by applying uh, this to the field, this, the scalar field that we have introduced. Uh, we find back the things that we have proven already. And we are expanding up. This is SU2. So the expansion is just a bit more complicated with the presence of uh, uh, the scalar product of three angles and the power matrices. Uh, but Brotep and Angler have made the choice uh, to, to set those uh, the three uh, at zero. So th that is not a trick. And it just means that the initial four degrees of freedom that you have there, there are three which will be used uh, in your derivation of the Lagrangian. Okay, there are three degrees of freedom which are available for you. Of course, uh, the idea was that uh, each of these degrees of freedom will be used to give a polarization, longitudinal polarization to the Z and the W. And this is what was missing in order to get the mass. Yet, uh, this uh, part of the lecture is uh, maybe, maybe three to four hours of uh, derivation. Uh, so this is a painful calculation. Huh? Alexander, you, you agree with that? It's a painful calculation. And, uh, we will just look at the final equation and try to interpret what is there. But this is, this is nothing more than what we did previously, but applied to the covariant derivative for the fine field. This local gauge invariance applied to the, to, the, to the scalar field. So what do we get? Uh, kinetic term, bon, uh, that was uh, expected that there should be a kinetic term. And then uh, we are coupling to WW and coupling to Z mu, Z mu. So we will have interaction terms, uh, like, like this. So this uh, H boson, it will couple to WW and to ZZ. Uh, I just would like you to uh, tell me about this uh, member of the equation. Remember what V is? Yeah, this is the vacuum expectation value, the minimum of the, the electroweak nature. And this is what? Something which varies? Or? Ah, this is a constant. Means that we have a term constant which will multiply the product of field, which is nothing else than the mass term. Okay? So it, maybe it's more impressive when you do the calculation by yourself till the end that you, you get the, the final result. Uh, so we have set in the nature a scalar doublet. We have just used the tree that we work in a unitary uh, gauge in a not to be resolved like that. And the degrees of freedom that we have left away, they are just injected back in those couplings. So the W and the Z, they are receiving a mass uh, from the vacuum uh, expectation value. Remember the photon in the plasma, this is what we wanted to do. Uh, we populate the vacuum with the field, and it couples to our uh, elementary bosons. Okay, so the exact uh, quantitative masses uh, are uh, given by cosine squared theta w and gw squared b squared of. Bon, uh, we just identified that to. Uh, mass of the W square times the W uh, mu, W mu. Uh, all this becomes the mass of the W. And look at that. The mass of the W is given to be one half 
of the vacuum expectation value times the cooling constant of the Wigner function. And this is not all. The mass of the Z is given to be the same, but the uh, electroweak mixing angle, uh, theta angle. So that is a, a fantastic uh, achievement. You feel it? Because we, we have preserved our dogma thanks to the spontaneous symmetry breaking of the introduction of the scalar. And we have more than that. I mean, uh, we, we keep all the predictions that we made, and we have the mass for the bosons, and it is related. Always, you, you need experimentalism there to determine that value, not uh, the uh, That was my uh, university uh, thesis. So, uh, we have mass now for the gauge bosons, and they are related, but we have much. Yes, I should uh, go to the conclusions. You would allow me to what? Uh, five minutes. Five minutes. It's okay. Uh, yeah, w what is great is that we do not have any mass term for the photon. So we get that about you uh, as well. Uh, we have couplings of the gauge bosons with the fluctuations of the, of the vacuum. So these are trilinear and quadrilinear gauge couplings, WH. Uh, and what we have written here is just standing in the standard. Uh, the, the potential part of the Lagrangian brings you the mass of the Higgs and brings you uh, the self coupings of the Higgs boson. Mm -hmm. So this is written in diagrams. And what we were able to predict here is that Higgs into ZZ, the coupling is proportional to the mass of the Z to the square divided by the vacuum expectation value. Mm -hmm. Nice. You can make uh, computations with that. Uh, and, and you get all, all of this through both the kinetic terms of the Lagrangian and the potential of the Lagrangian. Uh, let me make just a numerics uh, aparte in, in that. Uh, v square is directly related to G theorem. So this is, a, this is a free parameter of the theory, but this is something you can get from low energy physics. The lifetime of the muon is giving you the vacuum expectation value. Nice. And the value of it is 246G. So this, we are speaking about the, the vacuum. Huh? The vacuum expectation value is 246G. 246 times the mass of the vacuum. OK. So uh, I just predicted the, the mass of the Z, the, the, the coupling of the, sorry, the coupling here of the, of the X to the Z. And so if I have enough energy to produce X boson, and I, I look at how they do uh, decay to ZZ, because that's the trilinear uh, I can predict everything. I can predict this red stuff. So here you find from CMS the ah, let me write it. Uh, so you are you don't know what here, but what you are sure of is that you get u plus u minus and the other z goes to whatever u plus u minus formulas. That can be a uh, I can calculate that coupling now, and uh, I can tell how much I'm waiting for them at the edge. And so CMS uh, physicists have built the invariant mass of uh, the final state, which is formulas. So you find back standard model uh, stuff, uh, uh, background stuff. Uh, this is perfectly described. Maxim Titov showed you a blind region there. You open the box, and you see that, well, you have events in the region where no other standard model uh, process is contributing. And furthermore, the amplitude is correctly described. So all what we've did in that part uh, seems to, to be 
met in the nature. Uh, so that is about the potential telling you that, well, this is the only way to access lambda, but you will need a machine to measure that. I'm working uh, on, on this kind of uh, stuff, uh, 100 kilometer wheel in the Geneva area, uh, for 100 TV proton collider, that would be the way to make this kind of physics. And I will be talking about this, the part which uh, gives the mass to the cameras. Ah, because uh, that's not consistent, but you have it in the slides. We can also give the mass to the fact with the, the Higgs uh, mechanism. The only thing is that, contrary to the W and Z bosons, uh, the masses are not predicted. So these are three parameters of the same, as the mass of the Higgs is. And so uh, that brings me to the, the conclusion. So. I hope to have convinced you that from first principle we were able to deal with both electromagnetism, uh, weak neutral currents, charge uh, currents meeting all the predictions that we could do. That by introducing the scalar sector we were able to spontaneously break the symmetry and then, and then make the completion of the theory by giving masses to fermions uh, and bosons. And that there was a counterpart to that. A scalar field must exist in the nature. And it seems that we are a candidate for this in the nature. And I believe I, I will do a further lecture on the links uh, tomorrow. Uh, so maybe let me just conclude with this uh, outlook of uh, 40 years of science at CERN, which is a bit uh, uh, the history of the standard model to some extent. Maybe it started with the observation of the neutral currents from the experimental point of view. Uh, it was in uh, 1973 in the Gargamel experiment. Uh, then the Z and the W were discovered. Akile showed you that plot. Then in the 90s, uh, with the 20 millions of Z bosons, the standard model became a theory. It was modeled before. And after the lack of uh, measurements, it became uh, I guess theory, and it was a, we were able to predict what should be the mass of this. Predict also what should be the mass of the top, and the American people of Telatron have measured the, that mass, and eventually, so that prediction is met at the LHC. It seems uh, we are confident for being the scalar fundamental scalar which is required uh, in the model. Very last. <laughs> uh, the axiomatic that we have met, I think, is a beautiful. I hope I have convinced you of that. Both the local gauge invariance and the spontaneous symmetry breaking. And you have here the complete uh, standard model. So if you buy a CERN uh, switcher, uh, you will find a simplified Lagrangian. You can write it uh, fairly this way. But in real, uh, there are at least that number of uh, processes. So this is complicated, but it looks very nice. Maybe we will discuss that a bit tomorrow. Uh, I, I will not uh, drive into your minds the fact that uh, this science is over, because there are outstanding uh, questions which are unanswered by the, the standard model. And the first one is uh, why we are here. The standard model is telling that we should not. Uh, so we, we, we must continue uh, the process. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much.